Welcome to Westside Community Church. Here, Pastor John shares the vision and the continuation of the Making Room for More campaign. What I want to do this morning, I just want to take a few minutes, about 10 minutes to, and so I want to just update you on where our family is at as a church when it comes to our, um, our building program. If you're not familiar with what's happening at Westside, we have over the last three years packed this place out. This morning, not because you're the only nuts to go out in this weather, but anyways, <laughs> Typically, uh, you know, even in our second service is chaos. We often use the lobby as overflow, the fireside room. Um, and, and if you went into our children's ministries, any of the rooms, the nursery, uh, the uh, preschool, the elementary, they're just packed. Uh, this church is filled every night of the week. It's amazing how many people come to Westside. I tell people all the time, if you don't understand it, nearly 7,000 people attend Westside Community Church. That's a lot of people. And if we all showed up on the same day, we'd all be in trouble. Come on Christmas Eve communion and, uh, and Easter and you'll see most of the family. Um, on those days, we'll have almost 4,500 people will all be together here. And uh, it's crazy. Most Sundays is about 2,000 uh, people that attend Westside on a given Sunday. And, um, and we're blessed. God has blessed us very much so. So for the last couple of years, we've been looking at building plans. We've been talking in leadership circles at the board level about building a new building, about building something larger. And we've looked at all sorts of designs. And, uh, and in the last year, we really sat down and we dreamed big. And I don't know if you've ever built a home. Uh, I remember about 13 years ago when Michelle and I began to look for homes that we wanted to buy. We were done renting. And we wanted to build a home, and so I got a builder, a friend of mine, he said, John, he said, just draw me a picture of what you want. He said, I can build anything. So Michelle and I sat down at the table, and we drew up this drawing of a house we wanted. We wanted a, we wanted a two-story home with a walkout basement, and, and we wanted to have enough to have four or five bedrooms, and I wanted to have a man cave, and she wanted to have a little room where she could have her things. And so we drew this picture, and, and he came to the house, and when he came to the house, he sat down across the table from us. And he said, uh, he said, so this is what you want? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, how much money do you have? And I, and I told him how much money I had. He literally took the piece of paper, held it up to us, and then ripped it in half. And he said, I can do this half or this half. What do you want? <laughs> and, um, and that was kind of what happened with us, okay? We drew some pretty amazing pictures of everything we wanted. We wanted a walk out this, and we wanted extra that. And, and we realized we just don't got that kind of money. You all didn't give it. Anyways, um, so... <laughs> We literally got the message that it was basically ripped in half and you could do this half or that half. Well, we chose, uh, we chose what we believe God really wants us to do. So I just want to show you some renovations we've made to it. Um, I, I will forewarn you, uh, we knocked a little over $2 million off the price tag, which we're excited about. And somebody said to me one day, they said, well, John, if you can knock $2 million off today, why didn't you knock $2 million off a year ago? Well, the reality was we were still dreaming big. And I'll be a big dreamer, okay? That's who I am. I'm going to dream big. I'm going to dream for the whole enchilada. But I also uh, am a listener. And I've listened and I've told you over the last few months, I've been listening to you. I've been hearing what you are. You're part of the family. You count too. And, uh, and when we heard that it was too much, it was maybe too lavish, maybe it was too big, uh, then, then we're going to listen. And, uh, and I promise you today, if you'll stay with me to the last moment, you're going to like what we're doing here. So um, um, the picture that we had before was basically going out that end of our building and there was what we call the connector between the two buildings because of Michigan snow laws and, 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 the, and the limits that can be put up on a roof. We had to have a connector, basically a hallway, into what was going to be a main lobby and that main lobby was going to have a nursery in it and a, and a youth center. Those were priorities to us, right? We wanted to have a place for our, our babies. We want to have a place for our children and a place for our teenagers. And we wanted more lobby space. We currently have 460 square feet of luxury out there. Most of your houses, uh, the, the living rooms are bigger than our lobby. But anyways, uh, that, we want a bigger lobby. And then the third building was really an attached building, which was going to be a new worship center, a stadium-style worship center. So what we had to do was basically rip the picture in half and figure out what, what could we do and what couldn't we do. We knew the worship center was important. We believe Sunday morning is the main portal into Westside. It's the main opportunity for you to hear of Jesus. And so we kept that the same. We knew that the middle building was important to us too. It had a nursery, had a large lobby, and a youth center. But that building alone was about $1.5 million for that building in between. And that was a lot of money for three rooms. But those rooms were important. And if we didn't have that, what would we do? We knew the connector was too small, so we decided that we'd make the connect connector much larger, make the connector our lobby, take out the center section, and then put up the worship center. So if you will, go ahead and show us the first picture. This is what the new floor plan is going to look like for the building. 
Now, I know it's kind of a, a smaller picture for you. It's a little tough, but, but to give you the idea that this is currently where we're at, I'm standing right here. Uh, this is now going to be a hole in the wall right there will be a big hole in the wall. Look at that. I'm really cool. Those in the balcony can't see it, but I'm drawing an amazing picture with a laser light. Anyways, um, uh, it was a cow and a lamb. Anyways, <laughs> bowing in the presence of Jesus. Um, so that's going to be a hole through there. We're going to still split the community room. This is now the lobby. The main entrance into the new facility will be right through here into the connector. And you're going to come in and you either go left towards the children's ministry or right towards the auditorium. The lobby in the new facility will be almost 3,500 square feet, about 11 times the size of the current lobby we have. We still have the cafe. We still have the worship center stays the same. Uh, a lot of you are asking the question, so John, if we do not have uh, the connector, uh, the, the building in between, which was $1.5 million, it did have some important things, right? It had a nursery in it and it had a youth center. Where is that going to be at? Well, the nursery, we are going to continue to utilize the two nursery rooms we already have. But we're also going to use the other half of the community room that's going to be there and also underneath the balcony because we will be able to close off the walls underneath the balcony and above the balcony. The balcony will become a flat floor and it will be called the loft in the future. And that's where some adult education classes will be. But these four rooms that we will use and they'll be redesigned um, into usable space for the nursery are actually more square footage than we had in the building here. By the way, all this cost us uh, is in the cost of building this building. So there's no additional cost to us. We already had that plan. All of these rooms, uh, closing this off, was in the original plan. So it still doesn't cost us any more money. The $1.5 million is still eliminated. Uh, the children's ministry still gets to use this facility. We're going to, the children's ministry will get the current worship center where you and I are at. All the stage wing walls will be gone, as well as this part of the um, community room with the fireside room wall taken out. This is preschool. This is going to be nursery, and this will be elementary. So as a parent, when you come in the front doors on a Sunday morning, 35 feet into our building, you turn left, you can drop off your kids all at these three points, uh, and it makes it quite easy. All of these rooms, by the way, and we ask, we're asked this question many times, these are all multi-use rooms, even this room. Children's ministry will have first priority on Sunday morning for this room, but this room will be a multi-use room. It'll be used for all sorts of events. Same with the community room, same with every room we have in our facility. There was communication that seemed to go out that explained that, well, if this is children's ministry, it's only used by the children. That's impossible. Westside is still too big to get everything into one room. Nobody can really own or have a room. It has to have some multi-use to it. Does that make sense? If somebody, the message got out that, that, uh, that we were going to wow everything up. And if you don't understand what wow is, wow was basically coming in and making it look like Kid Co on crack, if not Disney World, okay? It was an amazing thing. We still plan to do a lot of that, okay? A lot of you saw that and thought that was flash and bang and a waste of money. It's not. We're trying to reach our children. We're trying to provide for them a great space. We did cut that budget because we realized some of it was a little over the top. We did listen to you. But I'm telling you right now, all of these rooms are still usable during the midweek for our adult education. This room is still very usable. Uh, I plan to hang a basketball hoop right there and plan to hang one right there. With this stage gone, we can go back to playing basketball. But all that up there, that'll be closed off the loft and the two rooms underneath will be closed off. So there it is. So we got the nursery, preschool, and elementary. We got our lobby. And we have our worship center, which will be right here. And the worship center will seat a uh, minimum, according to fire code, 1,208 people. We know it'll seat more than that, but I cannot publicly tell you numbers like 14 or 1,500. But that's what it'll seat, 1,208. Okay, so um, can, do we go back to one service? No, we still have almost 1,700 adults here every Sunday morning. We don't fit into that building. So we'll always have two services. So the question comes, John, you're forgetting something, aren't you? That's right, the youth center. Remember, that's a big part of our future. Where are the children going to go? Where's our teenagers going to go? I gave a lot of money on a commitment based on having a place for our teenagers, right? Well, we realized that $1.5 million to provide a nursery, lobby, and youth center would seem to be a, a, a poor use of our dollars. And then we began to think. And it was in conversation I had with our, our two guys, Johnny and Stephen, who were, work in our middle school and high school ministry. And it was Stephen who said to me one day, he said, Johnny said, I'm okay if we don't have a youth center. He said in the new facility, he said, I'm going to be okay. We do it right in here on Wednesday nights. 150 teenagers come in here. He said, we'll, 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 we can keep doing that. He said, I know someday we'll have our own building. And it occurred to me, have your own building. So we began to research, what would it cost for us to build this? 
And basically, this is going to cost us, these two buildings together with all the renovations, with all the wow, with everything together, less than $1.8 million. Do you remember the old figure at $4.9 million? $1.8 million. We currently have a little over $1.3 million that is committed. We just need about another million three from you. And uh, excuse me, we just need, a, my math is terrible. If we have one, I need about 500,000 and we'll pass a plate, which we never do. Anyways, uh, 500 grand to finish that. Um, we still have some debt on this original building. And then we realize that um, we'll have our own building someday, right? So it occurred to me. Why don't we just make a youth center, an independent, standalone youth center? Why don't we make a building where the teenagers can go to? We can heat and cool it more uh, economically. And we can secure it much more easily. So we decided to build um, a youth center out front also. And so here is going to be the site plan of that youth center. You'll see it on the map here. And so this is currently our facility we're in now, the new lobby, the worship center. This is the parking lot we currently have. We're going to make some changes to design and we'll put more parking lot up front. And then out in the front yard, we'll set a new youth center. 7,200 square feet, by the way. About 1,000 square feet of it will be used for adult education space in there. But the youth center will have over 6,000 square feet, and it'll be somewhere out in that general direction there. Um, and we get more parking space. By the way, doesn't that look like a car? <laughs> Anyways, so go ahead and show the schematic of what it looks like, the line drawing. So this is where it's going to be. So you're going to come in Sunday morning up the main drive. You'll enter through the current connector, go left for the children's ministry, or right into the worship center where the cafe's at, or you go right over here to the youth center. But we're going to build that out in, the, youth, out in the, the main area. Right now, we know that the figures are somewhere around $300,000 uh, for materials. I believe that what we can do as a church, so what we can do as a congregation, is why don't we buy the materials for that, right, through the campaign? But why don't we all build that building? Why don't we all get a little dirty, right? Why don't we all help put up this youth center? We can't do that on this building because it's a commercial building, but this falls under a different categorization. And my thought was, why don't we have some work days, right? Where you get to put in a little sweat labor, where you get to spend a little bit of time with us, where you get to use your efforts and talents and gifts. We are looking for you to invest in this. And so how exciting for us as a congregation to fit the DNA of Westside that, that we, could, we could put that building up, but we put it up with our own hands. What do you think about that? So with a new building costing about $1.8 million, with the youth center about $300,000, and with the debt we still have remaining on this building, our campaign uh, is about $2.5 to $2.7 million. We reduced well over $2 million from the campaign, if not more. We're basically a little more than halfway to our goal. What I really need for you is to see the vision and pray and ask yourself, if you're not a part of the campaign yet, then why not? Maybe this is an opportunity for you to go ahead and get invested in it. You can go ahead and start playing my girl. I've got to wrap up here. Um, it's time for you to get invested, right? Fill out a faith promise pledge card and say, hey, listen, I, I want to get involved. If we're, almost, if we're a little over halfway there, then I want to finish out the last half. I, we need you to help us build the youth center. We need your efforts, absolutely but we also need your investment of dollars. Be praying for us. We are beginning to raise an army of believers who are praying around the clock. Right now, even right now today, there is an army of believers praying around the clock. We just need you to be a part of it. So, begin to pray. It is the year end. If you're looking to make a year end gift, make a year end gift to our building campaign. Um, but I'm excited about the future. We plan to break ground April 1st. All of this can be done by September 1st of next year, about nine and a half months away. Is that crazy or what? But God is in it. We want you to be a part of it. Let us worship this morning. Would you stand? Go ahead, guys. See us out. God bless you. See you next Sunday.